Hi, I'm John Moolis and welcome to another one of my Kiss and Tell videos about Philip College in Canberra in 1976 and 1977 and my general recollections of education in the ACT in the 1970s. Now, in my last video I touched on technology that we had there at Phillip College in the 1970s. As I mentioned, there were no computers, no CDs, no DVDs, no MP3s, um, none of that at all, no hard drives, no, no, nothing at all. Um, I mentioned the school radio station. Now, the school radio station, of course, that was before CDs were invented. You had two turntables there with vinyl record, playing vinyl records. And um, as far as um, hard drive, what they use at radio stations nowadays, you had reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. Now, we had a semi-professional one, Sony Symphase Semi-Professional. I've got a few props here that, to demonstrate it. Um, this is a, um, a reel-to-reel -reel tape. This is a 7-inch one. That's a fairly recent one. I bought this one in the 1980s. And that's fairly new. So that's a 7-inch tape. Um, I mentioned filmmaking. Um, well, making um, Super 8 films uh, for the media class. I don't have a Super 8 film here myself because here at home we still had standard 8mm. But that's, <laughs> that is positively ancient, that one. That's actually a film of me when I was a kid that was taken by my father. Um, that's about 1960. So <laughs> there's that one. That's an, an 8mm film. And at the radio station, of course, um, the main format that kids used, that everybody used for home use at that stage, was audio cassettes. Now, I mean, you probably already know what an audio cassette is. You can still buy them in the shops now. In fact, I bought this one at JB Hi-Fi last weekend. As you see, the, the tape is in there, and that one goes for 90 minutes. And um, you play them on a cassette deck, and that there is a cassette deck from the 1970s. Forget about what's on top of it there. <laughs> Their, C their CDs, which I've bought in recent years, but that's a cassette deck, and that, that, that's a home cassette deck, the one that you had in your home. Anyway, that was the technology that we had, and it might be a bit difficult for a lot of people to imagine life without computers. I mean, um, of course, you're watching me in this film here on, on a computer at the moment, but there were no computers. The only computers that were at the schools, well, there were no computers at, at Phillip College as far as I'm aware. The only computer was at the education department which um, compiled our certificates. Um, so there were no computers, no mobile phones. Um, you know, a lot of you parents might be watching, might find that a bit hard to believe, but in the 1970s there were no mobile phones. So you didn't have to buy a mobile phone for your kids or anything like that. So, and within Phillip College we had an intercom system. Um, they were like the um, the phones you had in offices and, and you'd phone up numbers within the school and, and you'd talk on it. Phillip College was fairly revolutionary in the fact that students were actually able to use those phones. Um, in the old high school, of course, they, in um, the teachers' offices, they had internal phones like that where they could um, call up each other. But at Phillip College, we, we had them there and we could phone up uh, other... You know, if, if a kid was in another room and we knew the number, we could phone up on the, the internal phone or we could phone up the radio station, the, the school radio station. And, of course... As I mentioned in the last video, the school radio station was just broadcast over the PA system. There was no transmitter, no nothing like that. Um, so that was it. 
And um, other things that were really different back in the 1970s uh, was multiculturalism. Of course, um, nowadays, multiculturalism, people just take it for granted. People see other people and, and multiculturalism is an accepted thing. But of course, back then in the mid-1970s, there wasn't any. <laughs> I mean, I was about as multicultural as the place got. And um, I remember there were, I think there were about three Asian kids in the school. Um, there were no black kids. There were, I think, about three, two or three American kids. Um, no Islanders. And um, it was just very much, uh, oh, there was, I think, one Irish kid. Um, there were several Poms. I mean, they seem to be the biggest ethnic group at the school is, is Poms. But um, no, apart from um, kids of, of European migrants, of which I, I was one, and um, there's a, f a funny thing about one of the Asian kids. We knew him as Chris Horn, and I was good friends with him. I quite liked him. And at the end of 1977, when I was working on compiling the school yearbook, the college yearbook, he came to me and submitted an article, and I, I looked at it in front of him, and it was signed, Why Sabor Fang, or, or um, I forget what, exactly what his name was, it was a, an Asian name, of course, and I said to him, I said, you know, who's this? I said, why haven't you signed it Chris Horn? And... He said to me, well, he said, that's my real name. He said that um, I, I simply called, and I asked him why he called himself Chris Horn, and he said that, well, he said that, you know, Asian names were probably a bit too exotic for the, for the kids to accept, so he just adopted the name Chris Horn. And as far as prejudice against the Asian kids were concerned, um, there were Asian kids, a, couple, a few Asian kids at Melrose High before I went to Phillip College and there at, at Phillip College, there was really not no prejudice against them because at that stage it was when the Kung Fu thing was really popular. Um, the, the karate and the martial arts, you had the TV series, the American TV series Kung Fu with David Carradine, you had the martial arts movies with Bruce Lee you had um, the songs Kung Fu Fighting and Do the Kung Fu. All of that was going on. And I remember um, a few of the, the Anglo kids at school were really into it. And they used to ask, they asked the Asian kids about the martial arts. And of course, the Asian kids knew all about it because they'd um, been brought up with it all their lives. And and so the Asian kids were quite popular, as I, as I remember it. But as far as racial slurs were concerned, um, I had to put up with quite a lot of it at Melrose High. Um, it stopped after they found other things to call me. But um, uh, the, the word most often used was WOG. Now, um, that was, back in the 1970s, that was the worst insult you could be called it was by far the worst word and and as far as other words like dago i mean dago was uh, i i didn't consider dago to be an insult at all in fact i considered it to be a fairly old-fashioned sort of quaint word but wog was the one it was only when nick giannopoulos and and the rest of the the actors came up with wogs out of work in the late 1980s that wog the sting was taken out of the word wog but believe you me it was just a dreadful word and um yeah but like i said the the, the place was just overwhelmingly white white bread anglo and multiculturalism it was really before multiculturalism took hold in australia it was before um, mass Asian immigration started in um, 1977, which was my final year when I was in year 12 at Phillip College, that was when the Vietnamese boat people started arriving in Australia. That was when the first 
um, Vietnamese boat people arrived and that was when um, a, a large numbers of Asian people came to Australia and people became a lot more comfortable with multiculturalism, the concept of multiculturalism then. But anyway, um, I think that's about it for, for this video and I'll, I'll come back with some more um, recollections of Philip College in, the, in 1976 and 1970. There's, there's still quite a lot that I haven't covered yet. I haven't covered the marking system, um, the, the smoking policy. Now, you won't believe me when I mention that in, in a future video, the, the policy on smoking at the school. And um, a whole lot of other stuff as well, which I've, I've um, remembered from the years. But that's about it for this instalment. I hope you've, once again, I hope you've enjoyed this, this video. I hope you found it enlightening. And I hope that you'll be back next time for another instalment. But that's just about it for this time. See ya. Bye and stay cool. Bye.